So first of all, thank you for LG for joining the call because I know that we met a couple of times in the last days in uh, different locations. Last time in Zurich, which was yesterday in Switzerland. And uh, LG was so kind to present a lot of great stuff regarding the device as a strategy on uh, a short presentation that was such interesting that I'm really having a lot of questions for the date of today, hopefully we will see a lot of new information also for our members. So I know that a lot of people are around the US disrupt meetings for the moment. So we do not expect a huge amount of people from the community at the moment joining directly that specific call, but I'm pretty sure they will be amazed to look at the recording. So if you have questions or whatever as regarding the disrupt events, just join us on the Azure community in the disrupt channel. We will be happy to help you and answer a question there. So I guess David is still struggling with his audio, so I will just make the introduction right now. And uh, since he is not doing the first part, I'm not worried at all. So we do not have some time to spend on that. So warm welcome from my side to the first guest meetup after the summer break, which is covering the LG Electronics, Pittsburgh Mercy and IGEL OS from the community side. We will have um, a first meetup in virtual form together with Frederick Bradstick and Timo Siedenberg, both are extremely good friends at IGEL, one covering in a former time the Nordic part of the IGEL area and now as a technology evangelist is taking care about all the new technology that uh, IGEL is looking at. And also Timo, which is now part and VP of the support team. So we do expect a lot of information about how the support is working, which kind of improvements we might see in the near future. So that's really a meetup that I'm looking forward, even if I'm not presenting actively. Next one is in November. Um, that's a part with that I'm more than honored to take over, uh, where I will at least try to explain and to show and to document how to create a Linux debugging system for specific proposals like debugging Citrix performance issues and see if the issue is related to Azure OS, to Linux, or maybe to some other part of the Citrix client or VM with your Ryzen client ecosystem, or maybe somewhere absolutely different than on a network or on the operating system level. Then, we are excited to get, last, like last year, a meetup together with uh, our CTO, Matthias Haas, which we already had partially in the disrupt, but there we expect a lot of new information that didn't hit the market until now. So please join us there. If you want to join on general events and get some notifications, just sign up there and you will get a short email and feature sets. I will not cover every link that you are seeing there, but just saying that we are doing more than being active in the Slack community. Uh, we are creating content, we are creating reports, we are also sharing a lot of information through blog posts and making the, let's say, hidden part of the iceberg, which you are seeing in the Slack ecosystem in Google by using our iCard, but not wanting to go too deep here. But one thing that I want to mention is, um, we introduced a couple of months ago, Detective Tuesday videos. So that's one part of the Agile community video website where we are also sharing events like today, like with LGE, that you can watch on demand and afterwards if you couldn't join the main session itself. One more thing, because we have a couple of things that we do not promote actively, especially when it comes to, let's say, advertisement and marketing. We do have some hidden part of our organization where we invite people that went through the Agile Ready process, like LGE, to have a separate channel inside of our Agile community. And that's the place where vendors are allowed to share whatever they like, marketing stuff, NFR kits, documentations, news, RSS feeds, whatever. And just in case that, because you are not seeing it actively, because we're not inviting you, you have to subscribe to that kind of channels by pressing the plus button in the channels section and then click on browse channels. Or in that case, going directly into the channel browser and searching for 
TP, which is meant for technical partner minus. And then you have a list of people that, of companies you can join and look at their actual news. One thing I just mentioned before, the Tech Tip Tuesday videos um, inside of our Agile Community Tech Videos website are covering on a weekly base, mostly. I mean, I'm sometimes in vacation, but in general, you can say one to two times a week, we are releasing actual tutorials about how to cover a specific use case of our solution. Like how do I register to ICG via the command line? How to install VirtualBox on iOS, not iOS on VirtualBox, but VirtualBox on iOS, and all some debugging information regarding command line utilities, etc. So we are mostly done now with an introduction from the community side. So just one last thing I want to mention because it's still sometimes a little bit difficult to find a place where to ask a question. If you have something that you want to ask LGE, David, or myself please use the question and answer section of your Zoom client and not the chat. I mean, I will have a look on the chat too, but it would be better for protocoling and uh, asking and also seeing what kind of answer we get if you use that specific feature. So I would be happy to see um, a lot of questions there. In the meantime, I forgot, and that's absolutely a shame to introduce LGE. So we have uh, Guido, Bena, and KB on the call who are now presenting in the first part the LGE solution for approximately 20, 25 minutes. And then we'll jump over to David, which is who is speaking about the uh, perfect endpoint in combination with LGE and Azure, hopefully. And the last part, we'll cover your question and answer. So please be active there. I will stop sharing right now and hand it over to Guido. Okay, hello. I try to share my screen. Yep, seems to work. Yep. So just uh, to introduce myself a bit, I'm Guido Beiner from uh, LG European uh, cloud team responsible for all technical related things uh, regarding sync clients, uh, software around sync clients, management tools, so hardware and particularly a little bit of software. Um, I'm doing this for LG since uh, a little bit more than two years and but I'm working uh, uh, since uh, nearly 20 years in this area. So I know a lot of the competition. And so uh, that's why I think I can also talk about other solutions as well, if, if needed. So um, what I uh, try to show here today uh, is a little bit about our hardware solution in combination with the IGEL OS and the UMS management tool from IGEL. So what we have and what we will come next. So we have uh, pretty good uh, devices uh, right on, on their way. So uh, you will sh see it in, in, in the last slides of my uh, presentation. So, so let, let me start where we go. Uh, uh, so after what business we go, so our standard market is still the shared service and, and, and BDI services. But I see a growth, a, a lot of growth in the web application. So uh, as uh, software as a services. So uh, I would say the split is something like 80-20 uh, at the moment, and we uh, still see a lot of local on-premise installations, uh, but also Azure and AWS is growing. Especially in Europe, that was a little bit a showstopper because of the uh, data protection policies in, in different countries. But uh, right now, this is starting also here a little bit more. So. Anyway, most customers still uh, rely on the old services which are on-premise, at least in the projects I'm doing with, with LG. So um, I think I don't need to talk a little uh, much about the reasons why going to BDI solutions and using a sync clients. So uh, just to mention that the most important reason is still the data security and getting more control over updates and upgrades. Uh, and then, of course, it's the reduction of operational costs and, and uh, IT costs in, in general. So, um, and in, in, in addition to that, I normally say for, from LG point of view, the ergonomic workplace is also an important point. So since we have a lot of all-in-one devices, which can help here to even improve this uh, thing like uh, the clean desktop 
uh, things or it has uh, low power consumption, things like this. So I think we are pretty good on the ergonomics at the workplace uh, with LG products. So um, two weeks ago, we had an election in Germany, which uh, we are showing that the uh, green parties, so let's say the, uh, which are taking care on the environment, are winning big, and and I see that uh, that this point here, so the uh, carbon reduction will be more important in Europe. So since uh, Germany is playing a big role here, I think the new uh, government will also force this a bit, and also our solutions can help here a lot. So so it, it, it's doing it in three ways. So the device itself is uh, having low power. So the uh, average power consumption of a syncline is something around 10 to 15 watts. Uh, since it, it's producing no noise and no temperature itself, then you need less power for cooling systems. And in total, that means you have uh, much lower carbon uh, emissions uh, at, at all, and it will help the company to achieve their goals. So I think uh, we have to do some more presentations on, on this, how our syncline solution can really help here on this. So for, for the um, workplaces where we have uh, reference stories or at least uh, showcases around that, you see here nearly uh, in, in every environment you can work right now with a syncline solution. So the systems itself are so powerful that they can do video conferencing, that they can do uh, the uh, control room. So uh, even in 3D applications, the devices are powerful enough and also the networks are now powerful enough to, to, to do 99% of use cases. So um, we will send the presentation later on. And if you click on, on, on links like here on Hotdesk, you see um, a slide description, a light description how LG is doing it on, on a, cust a specific customer uh, situation. I want, don't want to go in detail here. Uh, you will have it later on and you just click on the name and uh, click here on, on, on the wording here above. You switch back then to the standard. So, so we have a lot of use cases here. We have a lot of uh, references. And uh, next to me, David will talk also a little bit how he is doing it in, in, in his situation. So. so so now coming to our hardware solutions. So LG is um, doing this since quite a long time, starting with the zero clients. Uh, so this is uh, since nine years ago, I think, we introduced the first zero clients. And then uh, three to four years ago, we start uh, also developing sync clients. And, and I will show both a little bit what we have here and what are the special specialties here about that. Um, and, and for sure, we also supporting all the major vendors like VMware, uh, like uh, Microsoft, like Citrix, and uh, the hosting providers like AWS. So, so we have partnership agreements with, with all of them. So to our lineup for this year, uh, so you see we have a real broad, uh, broad lineup. So we starting with the um, all in uh, with the desktop device. So the CL six hundred. So this is the standard sync client, and based on this platform, we developed uh, all the other all in one uh, devices. So it means the main board is used in nearly all of them except the thirty eight inch model. And the 38-inch model uh, is going not really end of life, but it's going out of the market because the market share was too slow. So it's a product and holds. That's why I removed it here. So I think this month we had the last orders for this. And then if you need this, maybe ask your contact at LG. We uh, can replace it into the market if the numbers are growing. So right now, this is our current portfolio. So we have the... 24, 27, and 34 inch uh, screens, all using the same platform inside, like an Intel quad core uh, chipset. Um, and we have uh, two medical uh, certifi certified devices. So, and I, I will click a little bit. So, so, here you can see a little bit more the hardware description. So, that's an Intel Celeron. Uh, 4105 uh, quad-core 
CPU, it's coming in two different hardware uh, um, sizes. So means uh, for the IGEL OS, we standard have eight gig RAM and uh, no four gig RAM and a sixteen gig EMMC flash. Um, and uh, we also have Windows 10 IoT devices, which coming with, with a bigger SSD and, and more RAM. Uh, but uh, all of the units we have here are uh, in the IGEL ready program. So they are all uh, IGEL ready advanced certified or at least are in the IGEL ready certification stage. So means they will be soon certified. So. <clears throat> Going back, um, maybe showing the special device here. One of the highlights we uh, introduced this year was a new medical device, which is coming with an integrated Imprivata reader, so an RFID reader uh, specialized for hospitals. Uh, I have it uh, in many situations on the, uh, how, how called on the Visitewagen, is it called in Germany? So Kau says the colleagues from headquarters. So. <laughs> computer on wheels. Um, it's also using the same internal, the, the inter, uh, same mainboard internally. So uh, means uh, the IGEL OS installed on this unit or on all the other units here mentioned is, is using the same kernel, same driver set. So it's, it's pretty easy um, to uh, do troubleshooting in case of uh, it's something is not working on one device. You can easily replicate the issue on all the other devices as well. Uh, when you click here on the data sheet, I have more information directly uh, for all of these uh, devices. So as, as you can see here, the uh, uh, new all-in-ones all coming with an integrated webcam. They have an integrated speaker, microphone, so you can use it directly for unified communication. Um, then here uh, it's listed the different operating systems. So non-OS is the device used for, for IGEL. And uh, since we are now IGEL ready advanced certified, we also will bring units with pre-installed IGEL OS from factory. So then this unit will get an I at the end. So it's not here, just in this case, 650N, it will call 650I for IGEL. So, so US customer or you as a partner can directly order it and then you just need to give a license in your UMS console and it's running out of the box. So then um, I think to, to hardware, I don't need to uh, talk more on these points. So since we have uh, all the standard interfaces like four times USB three, two times USB two, one USB C type, uh, type C port, uh, all devices can support up to three monitors, means uh, in, in case of an all-in-one, uh, then the, it's itself it's a monitor and you can connect two additional monitors um, on the uh, standalone box uh, desktop device. You can directly attach three monitors uh, and all using uh, uh, our power saving chipset. So means all of them from the main board just using 15 watts plus the monitor itself. So means a, an all in, in one device is, uh, is uh, round about 40 watts, I think, so to, in total. So we have it, when, when I click here through, you, uh, you see all the uh, specifics for the different models. So the main difference here is um, mainly the uh, inch size of the screen. So the, the 34 inch uh, screen is coming with the uh, 2500 screen resolution and all the other devices are coming with uh, full HD screen resolution. Um, and the 38 inch was coming with a, uh, with a 3,800 screen resolution, but this one is, is stopped at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so when I go back to my slides here, uh, then the uh, we still have the zero clients, means we have an all-in-one with a Teradigi chipset, and we also have an, a desktop type device uh, for VMware only environments, let's say. So that's not a device for IGEL OS, but we have it to complete our, our picture here. 
So why US customer should go with um, with an LG cloud device? So LG cloud device actually means it's a sync client and all-in-one sync client or desktop sync client. Um, from uh, administrator's point of view is uh, together with IGEL UMS, you increase the security, you bring it to the next stage and in this level, you make it much easier and cheaper to do enrollments. You can control USB devices uh, and you can easily block attacks, uh, uh, external attacks. And uh, in case of all, all in one devices, um, we are using a pop-up webcam means uh, from security point of view, you can uh, easily shut it off and, and the device is then hidden in the chassis of the monitor itself. So there is no chance to get a picture if you don't want to have it. From a user's point of view, um, VSLG are the patent holder of the IPS panel. And of course we are using these panels also in our all of our all-in-one clients. The big advantage of these panels is that you are have a wider angle, so you can view the picture better from 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 the side, from top and down, and it has um, much better contrast and and colors than a standard TN panel. So so LG was inventing this technology, and uh, we to licensing this to other vendors. So why not using it directly from LG? So that. And from the ergonomic standpoint, uh, we using a stand uh, which can fulfill nearly all the business needs. So you can turn it around, have pivot left, right, uh, and, and you can swivel and, and tilt. So. I would say that's one of our key points in, in hardware. Uh, then um, uh, we have a really strong development team in, in Korea, which is uh, introducing regularly new products, which are based on the latest and greatest technologies, chipsets, and we are really fast in this. So let's say that we have started our um, Think line program three years ago, and we offered a lot of different versions in this time. Uh, and um, I, I was seeing other renders which were not able to do half of them in, in the same uh, time frame. So, so that shows the power of LG, how strong we are in, in development. So I, I would say we are here a technology leader. So in, in introducing new hardware. Then we also have the, one of the biggest uh, range of all-in-one models. So uh, from 24 to 38 inch still, um, all are multi-monitor capable up to three monitors with 4K resolution. And uh, our big advantage is we are pretty long working together with IGEL to get all of our devices IGEL certified. So uh, we, already had a partnership before IGEL were introducing their new partner program. So we uh, were also certified before the new IGEL Ready program were launched. So, so since we are starting, we were working very close uh, with IGEL in this case. And last but not least, we all of our units are coming with uh, LAN, uh, wireless LAN and Bluetooth included. Uh, so you don't have an option to put them in or out, they are just in per, per default at the moment. Yeah. So what, what's coming up next? So um, on the last events of IGEL Disrupt, we, intro, we are introducing our new mobile sync client. So we introduced two different uh, sizes, so a 14 and a 15 inch platform, uh, which is based on our gram. So last year, LG was uh, starting a new business laptop uh, series and consumer series. Um, uh, and this was so successful. And we were asked a lot doing the same uh, for the sync client uh, section. And uh, we just finished the work on this and the device will be available or the devices will be available early next year. So in January, so we already have samples for this um, and, and the production is starting right now. So what, what makes this product really special is that uh, it's a really ultra light uh, device. So, so the uh, 
14 inch uh, model is just having a weight of 999 grams or 98 grams. So it's below a kilogram. It still has a very good battery, uh, uh, a powerful battery. So um, uh, depending on the screen size, we have a uh, 72 or 80 watt hours battery. So, so that's sometimes double uh, as much power than others have in their laptops. So you can easily work a full workday with these devices. And we also have a, a brilliant uh, display in here. And, and this platform is uh, based on the new Intel platform, the 11th generation. Uh, and our market uh, we, we try to address here is the co corridor warrior. So we are not coming with an uh, 3G adapter or 5G adapter. We are just coming with wireless uh, LAN. Uh, and you need to connect to your mobile phone or to an extra router if you need more. Um, so the, the, ad, uh, the addressed market is corridor workers, so users which are often on, on, on different uh, offices in, in, in their location or in meeting rooms and things like this. And since this is coming with a real uh, great powerful CPU, which includes um, also a good graphic engine, it's also good for graphic designers and workers. So, so you can connect an, a second monitor to this device with 4K and, and it's still powerful enough to, to do all the uh, 3D work in a VDI environment. To, to the hardware specs, um, we will uh, have two sizes in screen size, so 15 and 14 inch. And the 14 inch will come with two different CPUs. As you see here, the standard device is coming with the E3 CPU set, but then we have a low end device, which is coming with the Pentium CPU, so the 7505, uh, which is a little bit lower in power consumption. So the battery lifetime will be even longer here. And all of these devices will be also uh, certified. They are already at uh, at idle site for for first validation. So the validation will be uh, finished until uh, until end of this month, uh, as I heard. So and uh, but IDOS is already running on this. There are just small things like supporting the fingerprint reader, which is still not really working. But uh, as a standard work unit, it's already working and and available very soon. I have here, when you click here, you see more details about the uh, technical data, what makes the display so good. So it, it's supporting the DC IP3 standard. Uh, for, uh, so that, uh, that's specially needed for some um, C uh, cut or multimedia applications. Uh, so then <clears throat> here you can see the weight and the uh, the battery, no battery power is not listed here. It, I think it's coming on the next. And what's also important is uh, we have uh, uh, doing tests after the military standard 810G. So, uh, so means it's supporting pressure, temperature, high temperature, low temperature, dust, uh, salt, net fog, and, and it's really shock resistant. Uh, and this makes it very useful for, for outdoor applications as well, as, as long as you have wireless LAN, of course. From security point of view, we, we don't have a software TPM. We have a real TPM chip inside, uh, which uh, is supporting the latest and greatest uh, things available here in this. So. Okay, right, go back. So, so what, what makes our partnership uh, with, with IGEL, uh, let's say, unique is that, uh, that uh, VSLG trying to get with every device the uh, latest and greatest uh, uh, level of, of partnership in, in this program. And at the moment, that means for, from IGEL point of view, we are IGEL ready advanced certified. And for, for you as a customer, it means you will be future-proofed with, with our solution, means every future OS release will also support it uh, uh, on our devices. Uh, you will get uh, 
firmware integration from factory means pre-installed Agile OS on, on any uh, advanced level device. And uh, in, in combination, Agile and LG uh, so it gives you normally uh, the best syncline solution on the world. So, and um, we planning to do more next year. So there will be also other advanced features uh, in, in hardware next year. So, uh, and, and of course, all we are doing is in close relation with, with Agile and the Agile Ready program. So that's... Uh, from my side, I maybe want to just show a little bit the naming convention. So that uh, is explained here. So we have two different one for the mobile devices, which it's explaining what kind of CPU we are using, how much RAM uh, or flash is included. And it also showing you the production year of the device. And we have the same for the uh, sync lines. Uh, so it looks a little bit different, but it's also normally pretty self-explaining what we are here, uh, uh, what we are having here and which operating system is supported and which hardware is really coming with the units. Um, then maybe just some pictures regarding uh, an unboxing. So that what you're getting when you're buying uh, an all-in-one is that's the unboxing picture of a 34 inch screen. So you're getting a feed, you're getting a power supply, you're getting a cable and you're in the cable holder. So that's it uh, for the uh, 74, uh, for the 27 inch device, it looks a little bit different. So the stand is a little bit different but the other parts are nearly the same. Same as for the CL600 uh, specialty here, is it's coming with a stand and it's coming with a visa mount uh, as well. So you can place it directly behind any other monitor. Of course, we also have business line monitors as LG, which coming in the same look and feel like our all-in-one monitors. So if you want to have a dual monitor solution, you can get everything by LG and it's looking the same. Yeah, that's so far from my side. I give back to Sebastian. Hold on, just had to switch back to the device. I had the, yeah, the typical situation when you do a live demo that the device didn't get an update and I had to deal a little bit with the licensing now, but guess what? I just ended up. So there, David, are you there too? Yeah. Hey, Seth, how are you? Amazing. We can hear you. That's great. All good on my side. What about you? Uh, good, busy, like always. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> which which uh, disruptive event will you attend, by the way? I did not attend any of them, unfortunately. I got stuck here mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. Oh, damn it. Sorry to hear that. We'll try but to... I, I... I imagine it was a lot of fun. I still have time though to jump on a plane and go to next week, but who knows? Maybe I'll wake up and I'll show up in either Texas or New York or LA. Okay. I keep my finger crossed, I promise. So let me check if I can do now what I've tried to do in prior. So I will just take over a second camera inside of my webcam. So just hold on a second, please. Because after the presentation of Guido, I guess you want to see a device live and in picture. So you should hopefully see now a more or less live stream on the LG device. So are you seeing that? Yeah, it's yes. Happening. Yes, perfect. So. I'm not really good in keeping a webcam steady, so it's just my cell phone, which is in a in a live stream coupled into the webcam. So I just ended up in uh, creating some some profiles for YG. So we have a wonderful LG background, but for the rest, I mean, we spoke about the pop up camera. That's a feature. I'm not sure if you can hear me right, but which is extremely important, especially in Central Europe. I'm not sure how it is on other markets, but it's extremely handy to just pop it out and pop it out if you want to get some privacy or if you just do not want to use a webcam at all. And what I just wanted to test before uh, joining the call again, just wanted to check if I can now use these, the Citrix webcam redirection because I had a problem with my policy. So let's see if that works. I mean, just live, live demo is blinking. So apparently something is handing out and no, something is not working. So I will just check that afterwards, but 
I just wanted to show you the device and how it looks like if you flip the screen itself. So it's extremely handy and well built. So it's extremely powerful and high quality device. And that's how it looks like from the bottom. So you already saw the text specs, but sometimes it's just better to see it in life and in action. So that's how it looks like. So maybe just to mention that device is also usable as an external monitor. If you don't want to use the sync client inbuilt anymore, yeah. you can use it as a standard monitor as well. Great point. I have a, by the way, a question during the this work in Zurich and in Munich. You already mentioned that the GRAM will not get a 5G uh, modem built in. I know that we will cover a question and answer section later on, but. If you can, I would be happy to maybe cover that then uh, during our, our discussion because that's a question that is coming up, which is coming up quite often. So last try before doing the work of and logon and trying it after that. Okay, I guess we'll do that afterwards. So coming back to the webcam itself, let me just switch back to the regular one, and I will now say that. We would be able to hand over to David. What is your thoughts? What are your thoughts about a perfect endpoint? So here at Pittsburgh Mercy, <clears throat> what we are is a behavioral health organization where a majority of our workers are located out in the community where the people are. Um, so drug and alcohol services, homeless services, behavioral health services. Um, we do everything but what you do, what you see in a hospital. Um, so a lot of our users are on laptops that are connected to hotspots on cell phones. Um, I really do like that the LG devices are going to have a, you did say they're going to have a built-in um, modem for 4G or 5G. Is that what I heard? Or they, they would just have the wireless connection? Just wireless. They, they will okay. Not yeah. Get so. So our staff are really used to using that. It's actually kind of nice because here in the U.S., you have the ability to be on wireless as a hotspot and be on a phone call at the same time. Um, so the with iGel and the future of the partnership with LG is uh, I have my day-to-day -day is an LG gram and my day-to-day desktop is a 38 inch ultra wide i love it they're phenomenal and the hardware is also phenomenal seb yeah so it was just muted so that's more that's interesting i mean what i was thinking of a couple of years ago was this uh, project called mobile think client and we had already some thoughts i mean it was I don't know, seven, eight, nine years ago. I, I remember, I guess it was Dell who brought out uh, mobile think clients, so or more or less a laptop with a think client operating system on it. And we had actually thought a couple of times about that. What should we do? And we really moved from that aspect to do our own hardware, our own mobile device, just because we have to cover so much different use cases, so much different display sizes, so much different connectivities that we... I hope it was the right decision, but I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, when the route down to say, okay, we just take over the software part and we have partners who are dealing with hardware all the day long, like at GE, and providing amazing hardware. So that's definitely a part where I'm seeing that the LGE is at the moment one of the hottest topics at, uh, at, at our customers because we are dealing at Agile, I mean, it's not a secret, with a chip, chip outage that other vendors are also hitting. So we have some uh, de delivery, uh, delivery, um, well, hold on, just saying for, for, for the English term, but some, uh, some delays. Um, and that's where we are more than happy to have people like like LG on the call who can provide such kind of hardware quite instantly. But that's a topic we'll cover later on. What about the, the connectivity? I mean, um, David, is it something that is really important to you to end users or are they, let's, let's call it standard office users who are doing what, let's say one headset, one USB thing, and that's it? Um, no, we have a <clears throat> we have varying different uh, hardware types that they connect to their devices. Uh, we do have some users that are utilizing headsets for if they're out in the community. Um, the one thing is Topaz signature pads uh, is something we have to integrate with 
a lot because if you're seeing a client and and you can't capture a signature on the screen through a stylus, um, you would have to hand them uh, a signature pad. And with COVID and the way things are, everything was designed to flip your device around and have them sign it. Well, at that point, you then have to sanitize it so that there's no spread of possible uh, COVID. So with iGel and our devices that we're using, it's it's it works with everything that we needed to work with. And then we also try to throw something new and we're like, well, what about this or what about that? Or <clears throat> you, you just pointed out once once one specific information that I found extremely useful and I would like to get some some feedback from you and also from my G. I had the discussion, I don't know, 20 times during the um, the disrupt events. Is that device having a touch display? Mostly I said no. And then say, what is the use case? Why do you need a, a, a touch display? Are you using it quite often? I mean, on uh, the I would say because of some of the issues we were having with our Citrix environment and passing through the USB, mm -hmm. um, we started looking at more and more of touchscreens okay. uh, displays because it's integrated right into the board and it automatically passes in. And I don't have to build anything that will uh, build any special policies or profiles or things like that. Um, we really started moving down that route Mm -hmm. of touchscreens a couple of years ago, but there's still use cases where the touchscreen isn't the preferred method, where if you have a, a client sitting across the desk from you, it's weird to like turn your device and then you yeah. can't see it or what they, what they might be doing. So it it's some places touchscreen works, some places touchscreens aren't the ultimate solution. Makes sense. Makes sense. I was thinking about the, the people working at the normal teleworkers at home. And they are, my question to, to the people who are asking, is that having a touch display or not, is what is the use case in a teleworker in a, in, in a home office? Honestly, it's quite often the answer, no ID, but I just wanted to have it because all the fancy devices have it. And on convertible laptops, like a yoga or something like that, no question, it makes sense. But on a normal laptop, I must admit that I, I do have a laptop at the moment, which is not a Mac. And I do not miss any kind of touch display at the moment. But I know that you, David, are using touch displays also in your in your private environment, right? Right. Yeah, we're, we're you that one of the main priorities that we had when looking at devices um, was touchscreen, but there's a lot of use cases where we don't need touchscreens. So like on our cows, there's no reason we don't capture signatures. So wherever we don't have to capture signatures from staff or from clients, we'll do a non-touchscreen device. Just in case, I mean, if I would ask you what would be the perfect endpoint for your personal use when it comes to a Citrix environment or VMware environment, is LG already matching it or are you missing a specific piece of, of hardware or feature that, that you would like to have in the future? Um, I really like the 27-inch device. It's, the, it's big enough, but also small enough. Like my 38, I love it because I'll do graphic design and video work, but mm -hmm. um, our, our normal staff don't need the 38-inch ultra-wide monitor. Even if they would like them, I guess. Uh, they walk in my office and they go, who'd you get that from? And I go, I'm not, I'm not giving up my sources. <laughs> right. <laughs> Perfect. Then I would say I, I just saw an interesting question in the Q and A. Um, not sure if uh, we should take over it, um, but I will just read it, and it's up to you guys. I mean, especially Guido and KB, if you would be ab able to to answer it. It was when would the audio issue with the audio in once be resolved? One to use as a telehealth device, but unable to move out of deaf and put in front of a clinician at this time due to audio issues. Are you aware of what the the, the issue is that uh, Brian is speaking of? No, not really. I was just aware of some issue regarding the uh, control of the loudness, uh, which was solved with the latest uh, 
uh, Eigel, Eigel OS uh, software. So there were some driver issues. So I'm not aware, aware of this. So maybe. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And I heard this from our technician colleague from Korea that uh, audio issue is resolved. So I, and this is just, I got it today. So I think uh, right. now the, our the US colleague also can get the update from the headquarters side. Thank you very much for that, KB. Okay, and then I would say that jump in, in the question and answer section. And uh, David, you are definitely invited to uh, in to answer too if you have something that is coming up from your company. So I'll just try to gather some some questions in prior. And one of them is, I mean, we just spoke about how LG how Azure is impacted by the chip outage. What about LGE? How are you dealing with that situation at the moment? Uh, so. Maybe you were saw that we have recently introduced uh, new models, um, and uh, that was also because of the chip auto, uh, outage, and we just uh, uh, switch, switched out the fiber channel slot. So that was the chip which we were not able to get, and we did um, a, a survey, and it turns out that most customers doesn't use it any, anyway. So, so that's why we shortly introduced uh, five different new models, just removing the fiber channel. So that was our answer to chip outage, I would say. And at the moment, we don't have it. Uh, so, uh, so we have the standard lead times as we had it before. Uh, it, it could be different than when, when you just order 5,000 devices in, in one shot, then maybe it looks differently. But mm -hmm. uh, as for now, I'm not aware about any shortages we have. Yeah. I would like more than happy to say the same. <laughs> Even on a private level, but well, it isn't. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Next one. Um, that's a question that I, from you, I mean, you already covered it partially in, in your presentation and also on Disrupt, but the question came up and, and just want to restart the discussion is, how can I order LGE devices from factory with iGenOS pre-installed? Uh, at, at the moment, uh, we are just... Uh... Uh, creating it, is it in our factory so and it will be available beginning of next year so that that's my information so so right now we have a partnership with distributors which mm -hmm. are putting it if, if you as customer want to have it uh, then the distributor doing it uh, on every device so they unpacking it putting mm -hmm. it on and uh, just uh, taking a small fee for this in, in in germany it's for instance something like 10 euros um for doing all the work, uh, but this next year we will have it from from factory, and that's true then for all uh, advanced level certified devices, which are all CL6 based devices, mm -hmm. so 24, 27, uh, 34 inch, and the CL600 will will have it from factory, and the next stage will be then the laptop model, yeah? so the same kind of laptop. Perfect. I mean, I was aware of it, but our audience is more than interested in getting some insight about that. So thank you for clarifying this. Um, one other question was, um, aren't Agile and LGE competing in the hardware sector? I have my own answer, but I would like to let you start. <laughs> so I, 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 I don't see us competing. Uh, so, uh, uh, when we are in, in projects together, then we are really together. May um, means ITIL is coming with their software solution, and we uh, bring all uh, our all in ones. For instance, uh, ITIL doesn't have any all in ones anymore, so there is no competition in this case. And um, sometimes there, are, uh, at the beginning, there maybe was a competition with the uh, desktop models. Um, but right now, this is also not the case anymore because ITIL itself sees. See, they see themselves as a software company only, and and they don't uh, care about the endpoint hardware more or less. They, they just recommend uh, advanced or uh, certified devices for sure, but they they not compete against us. I think. I would agree on that. I mean, since we removed the UD9 and UD10 from our hardware roadmap, and in my opinion, it was a good decision because if at the time where these devices were released, they were already ugly and outdated from the design, from the panel itself. I mean, there were good devices if you just wanted to have, yeah, a, a display on your desk, but it didn't look fancy. You had an extremely interesting feature set. It was just a small 
UD5 and UD6, I guess, which we flanked on the on the back of a, of a display from Samsung, if I remember right. But it wasn't really a great success, even if in specific use case, it was exactly fitting. So I'm definitely looking forward to get more at this one in all in one devices because that's where that's a part of the hardware. If you look at our thin client in that case, I would definitely use the term thin client that we're not covering at all. So I'm fine with that. So no question. But that brings me to another question because we already spoke about the touch panels and the question is still there and I'm seeing it quite often in the community too um, about all in, one, all in one devices are great. But the last missing piece, and that's at the moment even for us difficult to recommend a specific vendor, and definitely would be happy to, to recommend LG in that case, um, is touch panels. Is it something that you are planning on a mid or maybe short or long term? It's from time to time it's coming to the agenda. Okay, but so uh, will you? Will you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, currently, we, we don't have any plan to produce the touch screen thin client. Okay. So, yeah, I cannot yeah, promise or say anything mm -hmm. regarding this touch panel product at the moment. Okay, uh, but that's a statement. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so one issue what I see is here that that is not really clear how, how big the numbers really are in the market. So, mm -hmm. Uh, I did several surveys in the past uh, to find out how many uh, real how how big the real potential is here, and it often turns mm -hmm. out that that is so small that it makes no sense to develop and maintain a new device for this. So, so as, as that means, if you you as customers seeing a, such potential, please mm -hmm. report this to to our team, to your uh, uh, LG sales guy, or or to me, or. Uh, to LG and and please also report the possible numbers so it, it okay to that we see that there is really a market so at the moment I don't see the market uh, it's just uh, maybe in in some hospitals or in in some industry uh, environments um, but uh, the overall market globally is is so small that it uh, at the moment doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. to to produce a device. Yeah. David, what, what is your opinion on that? How many touch devices are proximately in person is are you using at the moment? Can you say that? Um, I don't know if I can actually nail down how what the percentage is of our devices that are touch. Um, we so whenever we started going live on iGel, um, we already had. Uh, touchscreen own ones um, and we were unhappy with the way that they were being utilized uh, from a management standpoint so we repurposed our all-in-one touchscreen devices with Agile OS um, and our workflows re re revolve heavily around touchscreen panels but we're in the healthcare like like he was saying we're in a healthcare space and we're also such a niche healthcare space we're in health i mean we're in behavioral health so we're not like a hospital so our use cases are completely different than what a standard hospital would be as well as some of the other uh businesses out mm -hmm. in the world okay yeah i mean it, it, i'm not even sure how many how many people are asking for that but i'm seeing the question i would i would say per month one or two times in the last six months and i'm not sure how many yeah what, what, what the potential is behind what, what kind of opportunity we see there is and, it just are they searching for one two or five devices or is it really something huge like we want to make all all our teleworkers or all our office workers with an only one was touch which i do not see a big sense but there's only one use case in which we use the uh, the touch screens and it's capturing a signature um, is the only thing we use it for. Other than that, um, I could I could find a solution utilizing a Topaz signature pad mm -hmm. since Topaz is now built directly into the IGEL OS um, and will pass directly into my Citrix environment. So do we need touchscreens? No. Okay. Do we have them because we had them? Yes. Makes sense. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, great. 
Then let's jump into the next question. Um, let me check which one would fit in that case. I mean, we're just speaking about the healthcare sector and that's maybe something we could just jump in. One question was what certifications do LGE needed or will fulfill to meet the healthcare requirements? Is that something that is upcoming already there? So we have some certifications on the uh, uh, all-in-one devices for, for medical, so that's the, um, let me check if I have the slide here. That was the, where the white, white devices, so white collar devices, so it's the 24CN670 uh, and the uh, 24CK560, which will get a follow-up device, which is then called 24CN650 or 660. And all of them will have the I, IEC 60601 and FDA, CDA, MDD certifications. So uh, that's uh, not directly for surgery rooms, uh, but for all of the rest in, in, in medical environments. So I think there's a limitation of you need to be at least one meter away from the open wound, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's say, so, so, mm -hmm. so as, at least at, as I know it. So we have two certified devices in, in this case, uh, and they're colored white, uh, and they are also using the same chipset as all the others. So like based on the CL600 platform, so it means same image on this, same management features from IGEL, and and one of them is coming with the Imprivata RFID reader as well. Yeah. That's great. We just have two minutes left, so I would just like to take over a question coming from David Prowse. Um, for all-in-one devices of LG with fiber channel, is it possible to disable the fiber channel card itself at the device level? Yes. Versus having... Okay, go for it then. There's a new BIOS version out there, so you need to upgrade to BIOS F5 or F6. So, And in this BIOS, okay. you can disable the fiber channel directly. Uh, but uh, there's also a fix in, in firmware IGEL OS 11.6, which right. can do it in, in software, but we can mm -hmm. also do it in device level directly with this new BIOS. Uh, new, it's also on the market since three, four months already. Okay. But uh, when you buy a unit, it's maybe still not pre-installed. So that's why. Sure. But that's a great, great info. I mean, um, dumb question, maybe then coming from myself personally, would we at the IGEL or maybe we at the community get an information about such kind of, of improvements? Is there something, an information page where we can subscribe to? Or is it something which is more internal on your side? I, I have a page for my partners, so, so which is more or less self-hosted by myself. Um, okay. Um, we are working on a micro page directly on lg.com, which will be hopefully introduced very soon. And, and, mm -hmm. and here you will also find such kind of information. But at the moment, maybe just drop me a note. So my web page is called ccc-info.com, DokuWiki, and, and there you will find everything around LGs and clients and, and software solutions and BIOSes and things like this. <coughs> would you be so can you maybe write into the chat? Would that, yeah. be, would that be okay? That would be yep, great. Yep. We have a protocol of it. Okay, then I would say we are on the top of the hour. So we just ended up at six precisely. So for those of you like David and maybe Ron who are maybe on the Disrupt event in the US, have fun. Thank you very much to Guido, David and KB for joining the call today. We will send out the recordings afterwards and the recording will be also published on videos.igelcommunity.com. Thank you very much again. Have a great week and have a great fun at the Disrupting One. Thanks very much, guys. Yep. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.